Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I'm, where I'm going to start this video with a question. Um, and it's a question I think a lot of people know the answer to. And that is, in a classic Sudoku puzzle, a normal classic Sudoku puzzle, how many digits do you need in order to ensure that that puzzle has a unique solution? What's the minimum number of digits? And a lot of people know that. It's 17. Now, let me ask you a different question. If you had a 10 by 10 grid and I said, OK, well, now you've got to position nine three by three boxes in this grid somehow. And then play Sudoku from there. What do you think the minimum number of digits would be in that puzzle to have a unique solution? Now, if you're anything like me, you go. Well, it must be more than 17 because I know much less about the puzzle. I don't know where the boxes go. So that seems more difficult. Well, hmm, except Lepton, whose puzzle this is, and this puzzle is called 14 because there are 14 given digits in this puzzle, has found a way of making this work. So apparently this is solvable by a human, and I do loosely qualify as such, um, despite the fact we don't know where the boxes go, and despite the fact there are less digits given than in normal Sudoku, and there are no other rules, there's no trick here, there are no other rules. So it's not like there's a knight's move constraint or something, there is nothing else. Isn't that extraordinary? I went on to Logic Masters when I saw that this was the puzzle I was meant to be attempting today. And I found this comment from Fool on Hill, who is a brilliant solver. This is a puzzle for the connoisseurs of Sudoku curiosities. What a beautiful phrase. And also solvers who like an interesting challenge. It defies belief that such a construction is possible. The solve is challenging in parts. Uh -oh. um, it is true. But what do you expect in a puzzle with just 14 given digits? Lepton, thanks so much for this wonder. Um, and it is a wonder. It's, it's, it's quite miraculous. These setters keep unearthing things that are just hidden in the nature of the universe. And this is another one, and I'm looking forward to trying it. It does have four stars out of five for difficulty on Logic Masters Germany, so it might be quite hard. Um, but this is what our challenge is going to be today, um, and I will get on with it in a moment or two's time. I don't have much to tell you. A couple of things. We are streaming tonight at 10 o'clock UK time. Love to have your company for that. Uh, we're doing Hex Cells um, or Hex Cells Infinity or something. Hex, Hex Cells Infinite which is the latest iteration of the Hexels games. We've done Hexels itself and Hexels Plus so far. Um, and yeah, let's see whether there are any wine clicks this evening. I hope not, <laughs> although I do hope there might be some wine. Um, other than that, we do have over on Patreon, there's a bit of a, a bonus for those of you who support us over there. Um, my very lengthy solve of this masterpiece puzzle by Jesper Josephson called Circle Sum. Um, and yeah, this this is a it's a brilliant puzzle. You must have a go at it. It is very hard. Uh, I think it's doable though, if if you have enough time to think about it. So yeah, definitely try and make time to have a go at it. But if you really like your your feature length editions of Sudoku solving, that is it's o clocks in at over two hours, and that's over on Patreon right now. Uh, and the only other thing I've got to mention is some birthdays. And I need to start off with an apology. It's Lizzie, Lizzie the Constructor, Lizzie 01, you might know her, her as. Um, it was her birthday yesterday, and we were intending not only to say happy birthday to you, Lizzie, but also to solve one of your puzzles on the channel. Mark was Mark was tasked with such, but it, it, it didn't happen. Um, so he's going to try and put that right today. So hopefully there'll be a late birthday present for you later on tonight and um, many happy returns for yesterday. I hope you had chocolate cake and I hope it was delicious. Um, now, other than that, other than Lizzie, Kelly, it's your birthday today over there in Halifax. Is that Nova Scotia? I know it's Halifax, Canada, rather than Han Halifax in the north of England. Um, and yeah, I know it's your birthday because your husband Julian wrote to us uh, with the message that he loves you more than anything which is a nice message to get on your birthday. And he wanted the birthday wishes to be expressed from him, uh, from your cat, uh, Millie, and your dog, David. And he sent a picture. So there is Millie, the cat, looking very relaxed. And there is David, the dog, looking less relaxed, but very attentive. 
um, and we don't have a, a picture of Julian but presumably you know what he looks like already so Kelly many happy returns and I hope you have chocolate cake too and speaking of chocolate cake Edwin whose birthday who's turning 37 in a few days time um, but is currently has his sister staying and so was uh, I think she, she might be leaving Washington soon and so I, I got the impression from your message Edwin that you wanted me to read out your birthday early uh, now Edwin goes under the pseudonym he who limps and um, <laughs> his, his mother's noted that he didn't like um, he didn't like chocolate cake very much so asked him what sort of sort of cake he would like for his birthday and Edwin said that he liked chocolate chip cookies and he likes icing so his mum made him chocolate chip cookies with icing which is an absolutely <laughs> brilliant brilliant amalgamation um so i am very jealous of that um and i i i think you'll probably find yourself in some sort of coma if you ate all that but uh it, it does look delicious and many happy returns many early happy returns to you um he who limps and we will move on now with alacrity and with the thought of chocolate chips covered in icing uh, in our minds to try and solve 14 by Lepton as Maverick is about to buzz past my window. These are the official rules. Draw nine non-overlapping 3x3 three three boxes and place the digits 1 to 9 once each in every box. Um, so we're going to have to somehow apportion this grid into 3x3 three three boxes such that there are nine of them. Um, and then once we've got uh, once we've got the boxes to so say they were boxes then this box would have to have the digits 1 to 9 in it. This box would have to have the digits 1 to 9 in it. Uh, digits cannot repeat in any row or column. So it's normal Sudoku. And cells outside boxes do not contain digits. Um, yeah, OK. And this is, a, this is a 10 by 10 grid, isn't it? So that does make sense. So do have a go. Give this a try. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, and I suppose the first thought is that if this is a 10 by 10 grid, and it is, there are 100 cells in a 10 by 10 grid, and in nine 3 by 3 Sudoku boxes, there are 81 cells. So overall, there are going to be 19 cells in this puzzle that do not contain any digits at all. Um, I'm not sure what that means really. Ah, OK. All right. So... Well, is it as simple as saying, yeah, all of the all of the given digits, and we know there must be 14 of those, they all have to live in Sudoku boxes because it says in the instructions that cells outside boxes do not contain digits. So that's in a box. So that's in a, th that, so the three by three that that, bo that that digit is in, I can place straight away. That is a three by three box. Um, that digit now must be in a three by three box. So I think we can probably, uh, I'm going to have to start thinking about colours if I'm going to have nine three by three boxes. But yeah, I mean, that's in a three by three box. So this must join it. We don't know yet whether this is in it or this is in it. That too must be in a three by three box. So again, we can do the same thing there, can't we? I think what I'll use is I'll use the colours as they're set out on my number keypad and see where that takes us. Uh, that must be in a three by three box. But I don't know. Um, I can't really, I can't really assign that a number on my keypad uh, because I don't know. Well, that's definitely got a box below it. Yeah. Okay. What about that? This one. What box is that in? And the answer is I don't know. But it's def. It definitely. It must take those cells, and it can't turn right. It can't be because we'd have two ones in the in the three by three box. So that is a box. Um, uh, yeah, OK, so that's going to be box eight because there's a box to the right of it here that contains this six. So that is some sort of box, but we don't know whether it goes down here or whether it goes up here. But now, OK, but now this seven is definitely not in the blue box. So that that is the bones of a region. And 
that six looks to me like that's got to be in the sort of southeast corner of a three by three box because yeah that can't be in it can't be in orange without orange being far too large and it can't be in yellow so that is the bottom of a three by three box so that that is a box um I want to say that that is the top right of a box. That, that's that got to be correct, hasn't it? That can't be in that region. So it can't go up at all. Yeah, and it's bounded on its right side. So that's a box. Now this one... I don't know what that one's doing. So, uh, hang on. But, uh, I mean, that's... That would, yeah, okay, no, I just had a ludicrous thought. I'll explain said ludicrous thought in a moment. That one, yeah, that's not in grey, and it's not in purple, so that must be the, yeah, that's the start of a 3x3 three three box, and then you can we can immediately see where it must go. So that's, ooh, that's horrible. Okay, oh, well, although it has trapped in my, my grey. I've got grey next to black now. I didn't think about this. Um... So let's let's change this one. I'll I'll use some other. Ah, I can do maybe I can do brown. No, that's a bit too close to orange, isn't it? Oh, what a disaster! We could do um, maybe that color. That's quite a nice color. Let's do that color. Um, right, and now my orange region has got penned in, so that can be completed. My blue region's got being can be completed. No, and this well, this was the ludicrous thought I was having. Is I mean, it, what if we can't place? What if we can't place this box? I have an issue. It must be that it can't have a. Uh, so if it was there, oh no, I don't know. I'm sorry, I can't see immediately how to place this box. And that 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 is even more perturbing than there being less digits than we'd normally get. Because th we're going to have to play classic Sudoku now. We're going to have to play classic Sudoku and finish the puzzle. Now, actually, what we should do is we should label all the cells that definitely don't have digits in them. Uh, those ones. And we've got, OK, so we get an ambiguity left with this one. And we should also, of course, uh, let's use the line tool to do this. We should delineate the boxes so it looks as much like normal Sudoku as it possibly can. Um, this will definitely be incredibly important to solving it. I mean, practically it will solve itself once we've got the boxes in, I've no doubt. Uh, it does look prettier. It definitely looks prettier. And now we just have to solve the Sudoku. That's all we have to do, 14 digits. So let's have a think about how we're going to do that. One looks like it's the most profligate digit, the most prolific digit in the puzzle. And okay, yeah, I can do a pencil marked one in row, whatever that row is, row nine, um, because there must be a, a one in this row. Yeah, this, this, is, this is why intuitively this doesn't feel right that this can solve because look at this column for example this column has only six digits in it so you can't I can't look at this column and say ah one in this column has to be in one of those two cells because there might not be a one in this column digits cannot repeat in any row or column is the rule it doesn't say you've got to put nine well indeed you can't put nine digits in this column And there's no, there's no communication between the digits. Oh, yes, there is. OK, where is one in this box? I was about to say that they just don't work together, but that I didn't see that I could put one in here. Right. So one is in one of those squares in box six now by Sudoku. I mean, this is outrageous. I'm going to be made to do Sudoku incredibly early, 14 minutes into the puzzle. I'm already, confi you know, I'm confined doing Sudoku immediately. What about two? I've only got one, two in the grid. Three, let's guess. One, there's two fours at least. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there are two fours. Oh, 
Oh, I don't know. I mean, what am I meant to do with that? Nothing. What is one five? Is there two sixes? I mean, is that a pencil mark? I mean, it is a pencil mark. It doesn't feel a very useful one. Oh, I see. Okay, so where's six in dark blue? It's in one of those three squares. So that oh, so now I've got a I've got a digit. <laughs> I've got a digit because there's a six in one of those. Okay, so that's given me two digits actually because that beginning of six means that's a one using our pencil marks to unwind. Okay, so now I've got four ones in the grid and I've got a, an extra six. So the six in row, this row, I don't, I don't know where box four is going to go in the end. It's either going to be there or there. But I do know that there must be a six in this row somewhere because it's going to have nine coloured cells in it in the end. So the six in this row, which can't be in there, must be in green. And so it's in one of three places. I mean, that's such a ludicrous pencil, pencil mark again. But now I've got six, seven and one here, but I don't know anything about. I know absolutely nothing more about these cells. Oh, OK, although. Although, do we know? Oh, now, no, OK, no, I, I was just thinking, can I use the law of leftovers? Um, I don't think I can, but, but the thought I was having was this one. Uh, dark blue, orange and light blue. Those are three complete boxes of the Sudoku. So they're going to have three sets of the digits one to nine in them. Now that column is going to contain one set of the digits one to nine. That column is going to contain a second set of the digits one to nine. So these cells here are going to be the third set of the digits one to nine that make up the totality of dark blue, orange and light blue. These digits here. So what we could do as a result of that, although I don't think it's very helpful, is to note that, for example, four is not possible to put four down here because four would then repeat in that nine cell region. And there would effectively be four fours in three boxes of the puzzle, which is not going to work. Um. Yeah, that's all true. That's all true, but absolutely hopeless, isn't it? OK, so we've got to use something else. We, where did we get to in our going through the digits? We got as far as six. So seven. We do have two sevens in the grid. So seven is in one of three places in box five. One of three places in box nine. Dear, dear, dear. How on earth do you do this? Oh, OK. <laughs> OK. All right. So we can, we can use actually. Yeah, we can. We can use what we just said. So we said that th these digits are two sets of the digits one to nine. So these were like an extra region of the puzzle. So we can't repeat the seven, can we, in these squares? Because that would put two sevens in that extra region and if there's no seven there and there's no seven there which there aren't therefore by sudoku there must be a seven in those three squares and we get a digit so that's another harder and digit we can get in box five and now we can place seven or we can't place it but seven is pencil mark markable in this row which must have a seven in it and also seven must appear in this column so it's got to go up here in one of those two positions. And next, for our next trick, we will say that. I don't know. <laughs> um, eight? No. 
<laughs> there's just nothing here. We could... This is absolutely ridiculous. I've managed to get us up to... Where was I? I've got us up to 17 digits now. So we're now at a point where I imagine, you know, if this was a classic Sudoku, it would feel more difficult than a classic Sudoku normally because none of the... None of the boxes align with each other. Um, oh dear, I don't even. I don't. I don't really have any intuition. Well, when I say I re don't really, I don't have any intuition about where to look. Even. I, I want to use this triple somehow because you know, if I, if I knew anything about these digits, I could. I could at least pencil mark something in here. Right, okay. What I could do... Wow, okay. Uh, I think that digit is a four. That's that's fairly straightforward, actually, I think. Oh, actually, is it even right? No, that might be wrong. No, that is... I, th oh, I don't even know. Uh, OK, so what I did th to get that is I looked at this row and I said there has to be a 4 in it. So that, that one of those was a 4. And this might be where I go wrong. I then said that 4 there is locking 4 out of these squares. So four in purple is in one of those and four in yellow is in one of those. So if we look at this column and this column together and ask the question, how many fours are in this, these two columns combined? There's one four in this column, isn't there? There's one four in this column. So there should be two fours in this columns. And I know there's one four there and there's one four there. So you can't have more fours. So I think that is logical, actually. I think that is a four. Right. OK, and that is useful because now I think I can get this this um, I, can, I can get this box positioned. Yeah, right. So imagine that light green came here. Now. Now, bear with me on this, but look at those two columns. So what we're looking at now is we're looking at the combined contents of dark green, light green and red, which I think we could agree are three sets of the digits one to nine. But those two columns are two sets of the digits one to nine. So this stripe of digits here, the rest of the cells in dark green, light green and red are one set of the digits one to nine. And they must have a four in them, but they can't now because this four locks four out of all those and that four takes care of those as well so there's no possibility of putting four in this sort of putative extra region so that means that green can't go there green has to go over here and therefore we get another well we get the final positioning don't we and now we can do that and and rule um, oh now that's not a six so we get a six over here now and that means that means we've got sort of approximately placed all the high digits in row six, although I want to say that's row five for some reason, because it, I think it's because it interacts with the middle cell of the grid or the one I think looks like it should be the middle cell of the grid. OK, so what does that give us then? That gives us we know the position of this one now. And the four, yes, OK, so we should ask where the four goes in it, because that's the natural question. And the natural question is where the four goes in the extra region, because this cell locks four out of red, that cell locks four out of green. So four is in one of those three cells. And it's not there because there's a four looking across at it. So four is now in one of two cells. And that's absolutely useless. Um, oh, no, 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 I've got... Ah, <laughs> um, 
I don't know. What on earth? What on earth are we meant to do here then? We probably have to keep looking at these extra regions. I think this is it's the only tactic I can really think of to try in this puzzle is to keep trying to come up with these you know comparing three region or three boxes with two rows or two columns to try and identify extra nine cell slugs of the grid in fact i wonder is that why this works is it something to do with because you can create weird geometric tricks you can get more power from digits somehow i wonder if it's i wonder if that's how the the, the magic is occurring sort of under the bonnet Yeah, you see what you could do. That must be right. Yeah, okay. So if we if we if we if we extend the trick to to these cells here, we can say that's two complete columns of the Sudoku. Now grey, purple, and yellow together are three complete boxes of the Sudoku. So the extra region in in that case is these nine cells. Now, what, what does that mean for those three cells? Those three cells, let's, um, let's mark them up somehow, make them, let's draw a green line down there. Those three digits have to appear in this extra region. Well, where do they go then? They can't go in their own column, so they must be the same as those three digits, mustn't they? So these three digits are the same as these three digits. And they're not one, six, and seven, therefore. So these are not one, six, and seven. Well, in fact, in fact, that's quite an interesting digit then, because that digit has, has to be the same. Well, it's not the same as the four, so that digit is not the same as the digit in its row, so it's the same as that digit. So those two digits are the same, which means these two digits are the same. And that means, so am I allowed to, am I allowed to, uh, yeah, I can, am I allowed to do normal Sudoku? Yes, okay, I can. I can do normal Sudoku with A in green, because A in green has to be, it has to be in green, and it can't be one, because there's a one already looking at A in column, whatever that column is. So A is in one of those two cells, I think. Now B has to appear in green, and B is in one of those three squares. And that means, what does that mean? <laughs> Can we keep this going? A and B, okay, let's, let's try and keep this going. A and B, Yeah, okay. We can keep it going a little bit, I think. Actually, I'm not sure. Uh, but if we look at dark green, light green and red together, that's two complete columns of the Sudoku. So this is an extra region. Now that has A and B looking at the bottom of these three squares. So these are not A and B. Now these at the top of top of the column and not a because a is in this domino so there is an a in one of those three squares now for b i don't know if that works as well i mean b is in one of these six cells so if b was here then b would be in here as well It might be worth pencil marking A and B, actually. It might be worth pencil marking them because they do see a lot of digits, don't they? They see three, five, six, seven, one, four. Uh, so I don't know what that means they can be, but they can be two, maybe. In Are they seen? Ah, uh, uh, oh, oh, nearly, nearly. You can nearly stop A being two. 
There is one. If A was there, we would know A wasn't two. Um, two. There can't be three. Four. Can't be five. Five is looking at them. Can't be six or seven. Oh, we've only got. Uh, okay, we've only got one, eight, and nine in the grid. So they're probably they probably can be eight and nine. Two, eight, and nine. Oh, well, that's it. That's it. We've done it. <laughs> because A is there. So it's not 2 or 8. So A is 9, uh, which is that one. <laughs> that is absolutely brutal. <laughs> that is brutal. So A is 9. 9 is nine is not there now by, um, by the fact, by dint of the fact there's an A looking at it. So that's not A. A is in one of these. A is nine, so let's let's pencil mark nine into one of those. And that might mean something. Nine is in one of these, obviously. And as a result of that, we will argue that. I don't know. I don't know, but that was epic. I really like that bit of logic. Um, so what about this column then? Two, three, five, eight. That's two, three or five only. I don't know. Let's have a look. Let's have a look instead then at the rows. Can we do the same sort of tricks? So these cells are the extra region that belongs to sort of dark green, grey and dark blue. Yeah, that's why well, it's a little bit useful. We can't we can't repeat one in this extra region. So that's not one. That's something. <laughs> we'll take it. Um, B, oh no, B, B has appeared in it. A has appeared in it. And A is 9. So that's fine. Uh, so I'm so sorry if you can see something. I can't. I mean, I can see. Th oh, yeah, that, that's something. That's another thing. Where is 3 in this extra region? And the answer is it's there, isn't it? So it's, the point there is it's not here. So in this box, 3 is in one of those squares. And that can amalgamate with where the three is in orange. And I haven't got a clue where it is. It's in one of six cells. But the point is that in these two columns, therefore, I mean, the simple way of thinking about it, I suppose, is to just look at this extra region. And in fact, if we do that, that's quite cool. Three and five have to be down here. So this this collection of digits is three, five and whatever is not used here. which is interesting potentially, he says, and then fails to understand what that means. Um, there's, there's so little in the grid. Okay, I'm gonna keep going though. So let's look at this light green, purple, and orange. That's, so that they, they collectively are three sets of the digits one to nine. These two rows are two sets of the digits one to nine. So this time we've got these digits as common. We've got a one, six, and a two in them already. We have not got Oh, that's gorgeous. Right. Oh, it's the same. It's the same as it vertical. It's the same point. It's exactly the same point. Yeah. Look look at okay, so what I'm saying is that the extra region in light green, purple, and orange is here. Oopsie. It's there and there. So that that this blue stripe contains one set of the digits one to nine. So where are those three digits in in that blue set? And they've got to be here, haven't they? They can't repeat in their own row. So this green set here is the same as this green set here. And then I can just say, OK, well, where's the two in that green set? That's two. That's been available from the very start, hasn't it? Because I, I mean, there's nothing. I've not used any pencil marks or anything to get that deduction. All I've done is noticed, noticed that region. 
Oh, it's beautiful. I'm sorry I didn't see that. I, I mean, I didn't even think to look for it. Um, but now these squares are five. Oh, well, that's huge. That's huge. Look what that's doing. Um, because look, now now these have to be five and seven, definitely, by the logic of what we've just been doing. And this has pushed my nine A um, out of this cell. Ah. And that's, I think, made this have to be nine. Um, and therefore, if that's nine, and that's also just displaced a four pencil mark, so we get a four here, we get a six here. And now we have to just pause, surely, and take stock, because that is a massive advance in the puzzle. This is a one three pair by Sudoku. must be able to resolve this somehow um, oh this right no easier 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 where is B in in this this extra region because remember we were I was I was worried that B was going to be down here well B isn't down there now because none of these can be two or eight which is my value for B so the only place B can go is here so that is B might, might not mean we know what B is yet, but that is B. That is a 2 or an 8. Oh. <laughs> you rotten puzzle. All right, change tack again then. Where is 7 in this box? Haven't got a clue. <laughs> it's, the, it's, the, it's the short answer to that. Oh, oh, this is no, this is better. This is good. This is good. This is such a beautiful point. I think this, I think if I'd started the puzzle in a different way and I'd started it with the rows, I might have been able to do this. How long does it take me? I might have been able to do this quite quickly. Um, because look now in this box, where are five and seven now? And they're up here. And I think, whoopsie, I, was, I meant to put corner marks in. But that seems to me to mean up in this two by two, I've got the digits one, three, five and seven now. I don't quite know how I've got those pencil marks up there. I can't remember how I did it. Yeah, no, it's, it is right. It is right because it's looking at this extra region, isn't it? And it's saying where are, where are one and three in that region? And they've already appeared, so they can't appear here. So they get pushed up there along with five and seven. So that is now a, a quadruple one, three, five, seven. And that plunks that. That means that's six. Um, uh, I don't quite know what that means. <laughs> um, OK, but this extra region now. OK, where is the seven in this extra region? Because it's not there anymore. It's not there. So it is there along with A. So this is a seven nine pair. And I can do that using Sudoku. So that's seven, that's nine, that's seven, that's five. Where's five in this extra region up here? It's not there, so that's five. And that must mean something. So the, this extra region is complete, absent whatever this isn't. So that is a two or an eight. And don't tell me we don't know. <laughs> oh, these squares aren't, can't be won by Sudoku. I think blue is a bad colour to choose because it, it's sort of blue on blue, isn't it? But I might have to live with that just for a moment or two. Um, two. Okay, how do we do this then? Um, I wish I wish I knew what. Oh no, I thought I thought I had a good thought then, and I didn't. Naughty brain, bad bad brain. I can see a situation emerging soon where we're going to have to pencil mark more liberally and I don't want to do that. I 
really don't want to do that. But I don't know if we're going to be able to make much more progress now. Oh, hang on, seven. Yeah, there's something. There's a little deduction there. That extra region now, I don't know if we've looked at this one yet, but these are the extra region and they've already got a seven in, so I can't have a seven down here. So that's going to be a seven. Now neither of these squares are seven. Sorry, don't know if you heard that, but I got I got FaceTimed, so I, ha I had to I had to do that. Um, and um, and yeah, OK, so <laughs> it, it was a brief interruption, but we were, I think we were doing quite well, weren't we? Or I was doing better. I've got a set. I've got a seven here. I've got a I've got a one, three something. I've got a quadruple there. I've got. Right. What else have I got? Come on, Simon. Let's let's get this done now. Um, I got nearly pencil markable box, uh, column thingy thingy. Uh, oh no, I hate getting distracted when I go when I get um, interrupted. I just lose my train of thought altogether. And we were we, we'd sort of we'd had an epiphany, and now I can't see what to do. Two is looking at that square, so that's an eight. Um, that's a two. That's B. B is two, B is two, B is two. Right, what's that done? That's got to the right. Now I've got, I've got loads of twos in the grid. Where is one in, in, in the middle row as well? I know it's, it's not really the middle row, but there's, there's ones here and there's one there. So that's one. So one in this box is up here. How many ones have we got? Not many actually. Can we get, uh, no, um, can we get more ones? Oh, okay. Five and eight in box one are in those squares, I'm going to claim. No, I can do better. Look, five, five and eight are in those squares, but look, look at the extra region. It's already got five in it, so we can't have five here. So that's eight, that's five. These squares are not five anymore. Um, this eight is mean, means there's an eight in one of those two squares. And the other digit we need here is six, look. So we may as well switch to central pencil marks, I think, for this, this little two by two area, six, seven, eight. And then we can get rid of all of the corner pencil marks. Um, like that what do we need here three three and six right so that gets us a three here and a one here this isn't one and this column needs in it nine and four bobbins <laughs> doesn't do anything well it might do something in some strange way i can't see how this column oh this column needs a one in it so that's going to have to be there and that digit I should be able to work out. That's an eight by Sudoku. These two squares are three and six by Sudoku. I know the I know the order. That's six, that's three. Oh, this is so clever. It's so clever. Um, and now what are the what does this row need? Two, three, and five, look. And we can oh no I don't know how to do that okay so we've done that extra region we just it's going to be a case now of just trying to filter th oh what about this column maybe three five and eight yeah where's where's eight in this column eight's got to go there so that squares a three or a five now eight now has to live in well eight's eight's possibly in the corner but not necessarily Oh, no, it's going to be. It is going to be. What we should do now is look at these two columns together. And that tells us that this is an extra region. And look, we've got so much of it already. So we actually know these are a three, five, eight, triple, and the eight's going to go in the corner and we're going to lose the possibility of a three, but we'd still get digits. We get loads of digits from that, which I, so I don't really mind. Um, these squares now are two, four, and nine. Oh, no. 
two, four, and nine. And so that's no, it doesn't matter. We don't know. Two, four, and nine. Okay, so or what about these squares then? They are also there's some strange stuff going on in terms of symmetry here, Lepton. This is really weird. Because these are two, four, and nine. These are a three, six pair at the bottom of the grid. I can fill those in. That's become a seven. That's become an eight by Sudoku. So this has become a one, six pair. And in this column, we've not put in twos, fours, and eights. So oh, this must be resolved somehow. That's not two. And uh, five, may oh five, yeah. Where's five in this box now? It's got to go there. That's probably been available for ages. So the uh, so these this square is a two or a four, and it ah uh, yeah, that's great. Look, two four eight into this row, but there's a two five pair, so that's become a four, which means this is now two or eight, and must be eight. That's the two. Uh, this is a four eight pair we can do that that's eight that's four so that's four we get a two nine pair at the bottom that locks nine out of this square these two squares are three and something three and nine. Oh dear <laughs> okay uh, uh, this mu this is, it must be finished now um, probably yeah I see how to do it look at these two rows and remember that means this is an extra region it's already got two in it so that's going to be nine that what that's going to be four that's going to be two that's two that's five that's nine that's three that's one that's five that's one that's six that's, six, that's three this is so ridiculous and down at the bottom two nine nine four that is a sensational puzzle sensational puzzle do i like it yes i do that is quite simply genius what a discovery that is um just brilliant absolutely brilliant i have no idea how you discovered that and no idea how you had the idea to think of discovering that <laughs> let alone to then think oh there might be a minimum and the minimum might be ludicrously small um but this is a sudoku I mean, I'm going to be fascinated about the comments, actually. I think as I was solving it, I was starting to appreciate that there is some weird ge geometric extra power that comes out of having the regions offset. But I need to think about how that works and why it should work and why it should effectively increase the power of the givens. Yeah, it's magnificent. and I don't know how you did it but I did enjoy it Lepton fantastic let me know in the comments how you got on let me know your explanations as to what is going on let's see some love for Lepton and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic <laughs>